got a delivery from eBay. Engine computer for 2012 Nissan Titan. It's sitting over there. Let's uh, plug in the computer. See if it talks. If it does, program the keys. See if it runs. Place your bets now. All right, here we go. Place your bets now. Let's go to Nissan. Let's see if this thing will auto ID. The VIN will obviously be of the donor vehicle, but I, I'm hoping you read something. Automatically search. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me take a picture of this. There's the. Uh, the VIN there. Let's program some keys. All right, so full code scan is complete. Let's clear all the DTCs. Make sure there are no more U codes. That's good. All wheel drive. One code in all wheel drive. Engine speed signal. And ECM says, obviously, anti theft. So, NATS. Okay. And we just do key registration, register race key. Okay. 7696 is our password. 7696. Okay. All right. So a little red blinky light. It's off. So now we have three keys total here to register. So we'll turn this one off. We'll turn this one on. One, two, three, four, five. Turn that off. And number three. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right, let's make sure. Let's see if it starts. Woo, victory, no more beached whale. I love it. <laughs> Every time you make a call and then you have to wait for parts and the thing's just sitting here taking up space, it's a little, you know, and the customer's waiting and this and that, but it starts and runs. Let's let it warm up. We'll rescan it for codes. So we're done with this. We have an ABS light on. Let's clear DTCs again. All wheel drive is now happy. Uh oh, knock sensor circuit bank one. Okay, well, that's, that's a separate issue. Let's uh, back out and do a smart scan, see what the ABS is fussing about. There's one code in the ABS. Well, that's it. So the truck's been down for more than half a year for a classic Nissan truck engine computer failure. So my rule of thumb is if it just goes into limp mode on the highway, you shut it down, and then it's a crank no start, it's likely your engine computer. If it's a no crank no start, it could be your transmission control module which is a real pain because it lives inside a transmission and you have to buy the entire valve body which is like 1500 bucks and then get the it's blank so you have to program it at the dealer that also costs money so that one is more expensive these we got lucky we found one on eBay but they're kind of getting harder to find you need the exact right um, part number so there's like 10 different variations for every year but good luck keeping these Nissans on the road. So I think with that, um, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. If uh, the owner wants me to address any of these other issues, we'll leave that for bonus footage. All right, see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, little bonus footage. We forgot to 
register the new VIN. So there's the one that's currently in the engine computer and this is the one that we want to put in. It's very close but it's not correct. So VIN registration okay there's the VIN right now execute um, let's input the new VIN okay so original and input value take a picture of that and let's say execute done love it I love it when you get a confirmation so now we can back out So basically back out of here and then let's jump right back into Nissan make sure it auto IDs it with the correct VIN automatically search and boom there it is 6 Apple Apple 0 EC 1 CN 302003 confirmed yes do one more smart scan for good luck. So the ABS has a code for one of the wheel speed sensors. Not a big deal. So I believe with the with this ABS problem, four wheel drive doesn't work. Thanks, Nissan. That's convenient. So it kind of forces you to fix the ABS problem, I guess. So, I'll talk to the customer. We might have another episode on this. It's never done. So for the ABS problem, right hand sensor, what the heck is going on here? We got electrical tape, some kind of spliced wires. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> that's nice, that's really nice. Where, where does that even go? Up here. Up here. Okay. That's, that's, that's classy. Here we have a knock sensor on bank one. Not exactly sure where that lives, but uh... Oh, we got mouse nests. Yep, this truck's been off the road for a little while. We'll see what the customer wants to do. Oh no, well I was cleaning up under the hood, trying to put the IPDM back in its home because it was kind of like just hanging out. And now it's a no crank. We have a CanCom circuit. We can't talk to the IPDM itself. Let's go check some connectors, see why we can't talk to it. Well, I took the stupid thing out. Now it cranks and runs. So it's clear DTCs. And then while running, I'm gonna to try to reinsert it and see what the heck heck I did. Alright, so I got some live data pulled up. Let's uh, wiggle some connectors on the IPDM. to uh, put it back in its home. How does it want to go? Like that. Like that. It's just, what a crappy design. I mean, it's just a whole gag of wires and you stuff it in the box. It's got like clips and stuff on it. How is this a good idea? I don't know.
what am I disturbing here? So this is uh, this is the right way to do it here. So what I'm seeing here is this main power connector. If I mess with it, stuff starts clicking. It went out flying. Um, I found the original IPDM in the back seat. How about we replace, put this in instead of this, see if everything uh, gets better. All right, original IPDM reinstalled. It has all the new relays that were installed to try to repair it, I guess. Let's see. Nope. <laughs> no crank, that's ridiculous. So I lifted the IPDM up a little bit. See that? Click, click. So now we're right there. Right there. I'll figure out what that clicking is. All right, so I called up the customer, gave him the lowdown, and uh, explained what was up. So at least the truck starts and runs and moves. With the original IPDM, no fuel pump, so that that's shot. Uh, I'm not gonna try that. ABS sensor problem, knock sensor problem. And if we put this thing back in its home, it's gonna click and it's not gonna work. So, we're gonna start with this, see if there's any spread pins in there. Try to make this happy. And then we'll attack the knock sensor problem and the ABS problem to get the four wheel drive to work. So we still have quite a bit of work left to do here, but we gotta keep moving forward. So, I'm moving one connector at a time here. Looking at the live data, boom, it clicked. So it's either this connector or the main power feed to the board that's getting messed up. And now we have to recycle the... Uh, key, and I'm sure it's, uh, it's offline now. Alright, IPDM is in its home. We still have good communication. Everything's working. Let's see if this thing will shut off and restart. Any lights? Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, we're getting somewhere. All right, so we're gonna take this thing for a test drive. Uh, check engine light is not on, so we're graphing accelerator pedal coolant temp, engine speed, ignition timing. I want to see what that does with this knock sensor problem. Intake air temp. So here we go. Oh, great. No, something else isn't working. And turn signal. Doesn't seem to have any power issues. It pulls pretty good. We'll look at ignition timing. It's under medium throttle, 12 degrees. Cruising, 4 degrees. 9 degrees. Minus 7. Light throttle, 38 degrees. 26, a little more. Clean up the brakes. We'll do a rev it out a little bit.
actually drives pretty well, and I'm surprised the check engine light's not on for a knock sensor coat. Right. Maybe we'll have to do another trip. Maybe it's a two-trip code. But if the truck drives fine, then I would say it's not worth it going, you know, taking all the rusty fasteners off to get to the that knock sensor if, you know, some mice chew the wire. Like, it has two sensors, and if it's using one to control ignition timing, that's fine. We're, you know, this is an old, older beater truck with 200,000 miles. We just want it to run right and be able to do work. Uh, we do want the four-wheel drive back online, so if you, right now, if you try four-wheel drive, it'll just blink at you because ABS problem. That's the way Nissans are. Okay. I think ABS problem is next on the list if the knock sensor is uh, happy as it is. Well, check engine light popped out, popped on coming up the lane here. And uh, the current code in OBD2 is the P0037. Heater control, low, bank one, sensor two. No knock sensor code. So I'm thinking maybe that was a history code from the donor truck. That's a possibility, and after a few trips, that will clear out. It's like a permanent code. Um, a little strange, but... Uh, so right now, the only issue left is this ABS sensor and the four-wheel drive. So let's uh, try to take care of that. Left rear turn signal doesn't work. I think we're in pretty good shape. So, left rear turn signal. Obviously it's not a bad bulb. Someone's been doing the pokey. There's a nice hole in the wire. And uh, yeah, bulb's not lighting up, so I have the hazards on. Obviously this has been a problem for a while. So, let's see which one is bad, the power or the ground. And then, I mean I'm sure the ground is fine because all the grounds are tied together. And the tail light works fine. So it's gonna be a power feed issue on this wire. Let's look up a diagram, see where it comes from, see if there are any intermediate connectors, go from there. Alright, so here's the diagram, here's the BCM, rear combination lamp left hand, turn signal. So we were at C13, pins one and eight. You know, ground is good, we don't have any power. So this pin 35C on connector C1 or E41, that's the main bulk connector that, if you scroll down here, you get, gotta get used to Nissan's, connector C1, wire to wire gray, pin 35C is the green and black wire. So let's find this one, see if, See if uh, the voltage is present there, then it's going to be somewhere. The problem is going to be somewhere along the chassis, all the way from C1 along the right side of the truck to C13. So here we have no voltage, so the problem could be anywhere. So we have to measure at C1. So here's our bulk, bulk connector C1. Let me try to get it undone. Uh, I don't know if someone's been here before. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see if that's. Might require two hands to pull apart here. But uh, the green and black wire is this corner one, so it should be pretty easy to check coming from the truck. Well, the proof is in the pudding, so I'm touching this pin with my dirty probe. <laughs> and look, we have a light. So at least the signal is making to here. So now we have a broken wire, this black and green, or green and black wire from here, all the way to the other corner of the truck. So how do you find that? Well, visual inspection, we can bisect the harness, try to find it there, poke a small hole, seal it up, and kind of go from there. Oh, it's a miracle we got lucky. <laughs> so unseating that connector and putting it back in, 
we got our turn signal back, so it's just that corner pin. Had a little bit of a bad fit. Let's make sure all the lights work. Turn signals, tail lamps, stop lamps. I'm happy about that. Excellent. And then let's try the brake lights. Yes, brake lights, brake lights. Uh oh, no brake lights up there. We'll fix that too, I guess. All right, we got the high mount <clears throat> stop lamp off. All three bulbs are shot. So 921 bulbs. Let's uh, <clears throat> reinstall all of them and plug it back in, make sure it works. Oh yeah, now we got all the lights. Sweet. All right, let's uh, last step: ABS sensor. Get the four-wheel drive working. And this truck will be good to go back to Michigan. Okay, ABS sensor testing. So, right front sensor, I removed the uh, ghetto extensions. So, here's the harness wires, and here are the sensor wires. So, I have them both cut and then probed. And then, we're going to connect them to the known good harness on the left front side. So you can see I followed the, uh, the wires right to this harness right here and we can tell that the white is on the right and the black is on the left so definitely make sure that the black is on the left the white is on the right. Let's see what code it sets. If it sets only a left front code that means this sensor is still good, at least continuous. And then we can wire that good sensor, or, or this sensor, to the harness the right way, make sure the wires aren't crossed, and see if that code goes away. Okay, so the only code right now is for the right hand sensor because the harness is right here. So this sensor on the right hand side connected to the left harness seems to be good. We can even verify on live data, if we look up, uh, see all signals here, and we'll just type in speed, and nope, not engine speed, main signals, so front right hand sensor and front left hand sensor, we'll graph that, if we spin the right wheel we should get a speed on the left hand side. And we do. Excellent. So I think we can salvage this sensor. Now what I want to do is connect the sensor to this harness the right way and make sure the wiring integrity is good all the way to the ABS module so we can see the signal on the right, the front right side. So we're almost done here. Hopefully we'll just need a good wiring repair. Okay, by doing a little research and some voltage measurements, I figured out which one of these wires is the power wire and which one's the signal wire and compare it to the other side. So now I did measure 12 volts on the power wire, so and then be like 10 millivolts steady on the signal. So I think wiring integrity should be good. So we're just gonna tie the right hand sensor to the right hand harness and spin this wheel. Let's see what happens. Okay, make sure everything's out of the way. Data stream. Main signals. Okay. So we'll graph this. Let's see if we see a signal on the right hand. Yes, victory. So that's it. That's the end of the diagnosis. Now we just need to splice the correct wires from here to here. So the black with the red stripe will go to the white wire on the sensor and then the brown wire will go to the signal wire or the black one on the sensor. Let's finish that up and then take this truck for a test drive make sure the four-wheel drive works. Okay so here's the sensor. I soldered on two extensions so red is going to be the white or power wire, black is the signal wire. And we're going to extend it and run it to these two wires right here. So let me finish that up and we'll make sure it works. Alright, so here's what a proper wiring repair should look like. 
nice clean shrink wrap and right there so before I wrap that in electrical tape let's uh, clear the codes out okay read fault code no DTCs detected and let's look at that Spin the wheel. Moment of truth. Oh boy. A little rusty. But it works. Amazing. So, that's it. ABS lights should be out. And this truck should be back in business. I'm pretty excited about that. After, uh, battle. No ABS lights. Sweet. And uh, let's see if the 4x4 works. I guess you have to have it running. Should we start it up? Let's see. 4x4? I guess it shifted in, huh? And then two-wheel drive. Beautiful. Four-wheel drive. Let's see if the uh, axle's locked in. Oh yeah, that's locked in. And two wheel drive. Alright, final shot of the repair. There's the wire just zip tied to the frame. And there it goes. That's the original harness. So if the sensor ever goes bad, obviously we'll have to cut it and do the same thing. And just splice it in. But hey, you know, this truck, it's kind of uh, on borrowed time. So need some tie rod ends. But it should run really well really well. Oh yeah. Less Christmas tree. Just a check engine light for an O2 sensor. If you don't care about that. This Nissan is happy. Alright, final code scan here. Don't care about that. ECM says uh, 328 FFT sensor vent control valve. What is FTT? 183 fuel temperature sensor, maybe. I mean, we did have that bulk connector unplugged, remember? So let's just clear all these out. Take this truck in a few more test drives, but it's not happy about the knock sensor for some reason. I don't know. 